Matt Chapman is an elite baseball player, and a case could be made that he's one of the Blue Jays' best players. But the fan base is undervaluing him heavily. So without further ado, let's break it all down. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Rio, and it's alongside co-host Nick Goss. And uh, before we get into the video, uh, we, we're back with another daily upload. So uh, we noticed that a lot of you that are watching aren't subscribed, and uh, that's got to change because we're uh, we're coming in hot with that daily Blue Jays content. So we want to see you guys smash that subscribe button, and you guys have been killing it lately. So thanks so much for the support. Yep, we're on the road to 1K. We hit 500 a day, and 91% of you guys aren't sub. So like Peter said, if you do feel inclined, hit the button, and uh, we'll keep we'll keep grinding. We just hit 500, so thank you for that. And there's there's no stopping. There's no stopping us, and we got the best and most concise Jays content on YouTube. I can guarantee it. And we're gonna keep coming out with the daily videos. I I know it might be a hot take. It might be a hot take, but you won't be sorry if you subscribe to us. Uh, now, one thing we did want to talk about here was uh, Matt Chapman. And how he kind of started off slowly this past season. And if you look at his numbers, they're not overly impressive either. But he's an elite baseball player. And one of the best third basemen in all of baseball in a position that is super deep. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, we were thinking about a video to make today. And we haven't really touched on Matt Chapman very much, really on the whole channel or this year that much. Obviously, we've given him his praise when it's been due. But... He's really had a phenomenal season last year, and without him, I don't know where we'd be um, or where we would have been, and he's going to be a key piece going into next season. So just a quick peek at his stats so far this year um, before I let you take over some more. He had a great offensive year. He bounced back. 2021 was obviously you know, a bit of a down year for him, 100 OPS+, plus, but he had a good, solid year last year, 27 bombs, and going into the season, you, you really couldn't ask for much better than that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, coming off major hip surgery – which is essential for a power hitter, he still got the power. He still showed that he can hit 25-plus home runs and be a run producer. I think the only reason why some fans are down on him is because of his strikeout rate. Now, if you show the stats one more time, I know we don't want yep. to bore you with the baseball reference here, but uh, how many times did he strike out? He struck out 170 times. 170 times, and... In 155 games, yep. that's a lot of strikeouts. That's at least a strikeout a game. And, you know, that that's the big thing with Matt Chapman. You know, when he hits the ball, he hits it hard. And when he, I don't know, he, he doesn't chase either. He, he has a good eye at the plate, which is evident in his OPS, in his OBP. Just strikes out a lot. So I can see why people are down on him. Yeah. Um, he had a pretty, now he had less strikeouts than last year. Uh, and four more games, even though he had a you know big strikeout year. But you kind of when when you think of Matt Chapman, you don't really think of a um, a non strikeout hitter. But he's super super patient at the plate, as we discussed off camera. And one thing I want to get into is just how important I think he's going to be for uh, well, obviously next year, but the development of Bo Bichette and um, our other infielders because his defense. I'll pop up the stats here real quick. You can see here that his defensive war this year was only 0.6, which was uh, pretty significantly down compared to the other years. But that is mainly, you know, different uh, ballpark and the shift. <laughs> so the shift is banned next year. So I think next year is going to be a breakout potential uh, defensive season for Chapman. And he's still going to win a gold glove this year. But I think he'll have an even a bigger impact next year, along with on Bo Bichette, assuming we don't trade him for Otani or anything like that. <laughs> well, if you look at the eye test for this past season uh, with, with Matt Chapman, you would you would look at him and say, wow, he had a great year defensively. And for the most part, he did. I mean, those numbers, they really take into account like your, I don't know how you play at third base, like at the actual bag. Yep. So it's you can't really read too much into it. He was forced to shortstop a lot. The Blue Jays shifted more than any team in the major leagues this past season. With the shift being banned next year, you got to have two players on each side of the infield, and I think that's going to help his defensive work quite a bit. Yeah, um, it was a good point that you made again off camera about the shift thing, because obviously his numbers are down a bit, and Oakland has a huge foul territory, and I'm sure that helped inflate his D-War a little bit. Or not necessarily inflate, but just show it off more. Um, but from the eye test, obviously we watch most games. He had a pretty flawless season. Um, he looked like just as advertised to me. 
and I think his impact um, in the clubhouse as well. You know, he's always he's highly spoken around the league, and he he's just such a good pickup by Ross Atkins. And I don't, I was gonna mention this to you. I don't know if we uh, should extend him. Like I think we should <laughs> after next year because I don't know who else we have mm -hmm. up, Arelvis Martinez and stuff like that. And we'll have videos coming up on that, but he just seems like such a perfect fit for the uh, the young core we do have. Well, he's 29 years old, uh, so he's in the prime of his career right now. And we remember the last time we traded for a guy uh, from Oakland, a third baseman. It was Josh Donaldson. Yeah, coming off a down ended up winning. He en yeah, he ended up winning an MVP. I'm not saying Matt Chapman is going to do that, but it's a similar circumstance. You know, you trade for a guy that was, that's been an all-star in Oakland, a third baseman, good with the glove, who has a lot of potential and – I think they should re-sign Matt Chapman. I don't think Arelvis Martinez can have the same impact that uh, Chapman does on the big league club. Yeah, and I think the time is now for the Jays. Um, and yeah, Arelvis, he's a project. I think they package him for a, a player, like, you know, been a big trade. I don't think they call him up. Um, there's a few other people in the pipeline, but yeah, like you said, now Josh Donaldson wasn't coming off a super down year, but he, like, he no. uh, compared to what he did with the Blue Jays is what I was referring to. You know, went crazy. So... I don't know. It's uh, as fans, I just want we made this video basically to highlight <laughs> the fact that not a lot of people talk about Matt Chapman. I feel like on you know, I guess Jay's universe, like the Reddit and stuff like that. And he's just pop up his uh, baseball savant stats here. It might be a bit hard to see, but his he is in like the highest percentile for max exit velocity, hard hit percentage, average exit velocity, um, chase rate. Like he's a phenomenal hitter. He has a great eye, and honestly, he pr he is prone to hit. Like, if he hits two fifty with the same power, he's top tier hitter in the in the league mm -hmm. and i said it coming into the season obviously we didn't have uh we didn't have this channel but i said if he hits 25 bombs and plays elite defense like we know he can then it's a win trade for the blue jays they they won that trade and that's exactly what he did all season i think starting next year he'll be more comfortable he'll know the system and i, I think he'll get off to a hotter start i mean he really dug himself a deep hole coming into this season. He's hitting like 160, 170 over the first two months. Yeah, and it's kind of like a Bo Bichette uh, situation, except Matt got hotter a bit earlier, but uh, didn't get mm -hmm. as hot as Bo. But yeah, you're right, Matt. He started off poor, and he ended up just turning it around phenomenally. And again, he was still, this is his first year coming off the injury that plagued him in the previous year. So if he's even healthier now, knows his teammates, knows the clubhouse, I can see another breakout year for him, and uh, he'd be getting paid a lot of money if um, if he has this breakout year. It's a contract year for him, so all signs point to him being, you know, elite next year. And uh, we might be coming back to this video at the end of next year, depending on what happens, and seeing that he did do what uh, we think he did. Well, I'll throw in another Oakland reference here. Marcus Simeon yeah. came here on a one-year yeah. deal. We saw what he did, and... He got the money, so it all depends. I mean, if Matt Chapman, if you take away those two months, uh, those first two months of this season, he ends with a 250 plus batting average, with a near 800 OPS and his elite defense. So that's that's a hundred plus million dollar player, if you ask me. Yeah, and I'm ready to throw the money. Um, another thing, I guess we'll quickly mention. You briefly mentioned it is that. The trade to Oakland, like you said, so far none of the players besides obviously Gunnar Hogland is yet to uh, be determined. But the other players we gave up, Kevin Smith, Zach Logue, all those guys, they really had poor years. Kevin Smith was down in the minors after I think 35 games, just couldn't hit the ball. Logue, or I think I think his name was Zach Logue, he left-handed starter. He Zach Logue didn't do anything, so it's really unless Gunnar Hogland turns into an Alec Manoa, and even if that ends up happening, you still you got enough value out of Matt Chapman, and even honestly this past year to to make it worth it. So just a phenomenal trade out of them. Well, maybe not Alec Manoa, but uh, well, Gunner. I mean, Gunnar Hogland. He was a first round pick, yep. so he's definitely got some potential and electric arm. Uh, you want to see those guys do well. You're not preying on their downfall, but if he does become Alec Manoa, then maybe we might have lost that trade. But for the time being, Matt Chapman has been as good as advertised, and he's really helped bolster this team. Yeah, he's been. As the focus of the video, he's been, I know a lot of fans are not undervaluing him necessarily, but like underappreciating Matt Chapman. We got to show him some love. He's, he's kind of quiet. Um, he doesn't really, and he's not the fanciest player hitting wise, obviously. And he's not the biggest name on the Blue Jays, especially because there's so many other stars on the team. So sometimes he doesn't get the, the respect he deserves. Um, but he's, he was key last year and this year coming, I just expect him to have an, a bigger year, especially 
you know, the Jays are hopefully going to do big things this offseason. Obviously, we've had a few videos about some trade rumors, and we have another one coming out tomorrow. So just keep an eye on that one. That's going to be a uh, that's going to be another good one. Um, I don't know if we're going to get Otani, but it's uh, I know you weren't there for the last video, Peter, but the, the trade rumors are circulating, and we're going to – daily videos are continuing to happen, and they won't stop anytime soon. Now, before we sign off, I want to say one more thing about Matt Chapman. I was fortunate enough to go to a few Jays games this year. I was unfortunately there for the wild card games. But I've seen him play four games, four games this year. And one thing that just stands out to me about Matt Chapman is his arm. He has the best arm on either team. It doesn't matter who they play. He's got a cannon from third base. And... Even in the warm-ups, you notice it. It's like, wow, he just zips it across the diamond, doesn't even try. And that's another thing that gets overlooked. He, his defensive skills, he's just so talented on that side of the ball that you, you kind of – you take it for granted almost, and, and you shouldn't because he's a great player and a huge part of this team. I was going to say that. Um, I haven't seen Matt Chapman in person, but I've seen my uh, pair of share of Blue Jays games. And honestly, it's – if you haven't seen a Jays game in real life, it's much, you know, they look make it look much easier than it actually is. And once you're in person, you actually get to see, like, the plays, and if you play baseball as well, the plays are super hard. Like, some of the plays that Matt Chapman makes look so easy are plays that an average third baseman would struggle with. Like, plays Bo Bichette would struggle with, for example. So, um, no shade to Bo, but hopefully Matt Chapman can mentor Bo and um, continue to do that. But, yeah, we, it's a good point. You take advantage, of, uh, take advantage of his skill, and some people take it for granted. But we are on the road to 1K. I'm going to throw that in one last time. So make sure you do hit the sub button before we do sign off. Again, one more oh, time. You played it this Yeah, time. I you did. I figured it out. We double it up. <laughs> I don't know if you want to thank him for 500 subs. It means it means more than you guys could ever know. Yeah, absolutely. I want to thank you guys so much. I mean, Nick's been holding it down. I've uh, been really busy uh, with, uh, with things in my personal life. But that hasn't stopped Nick from hanging out these daily uploads. And the big probably the biggest reason as to why we did hit 500 so quickly and and we're not stopping here we're going to keep going all off season long all next season long we're, we're going to come at it and we're very excited to do so yeah it's going to be great and we're in the uh we're in kind of the slow part of jay's news uh territory now so once the winter meetings start coming up it's going to get even crazier so stay tuned for that stay tuned peace